I like these numbers are not mm. they're not they're not going to get you too mm. excited if you're a Diamondbacks fan in 2023. As a member of the Chicago Cubs, he had 202, 285, 257, one home run, nine RBI, a 0 0.2 wins above replacement over at Fangraphs. So, yeah, uh, this is a an interesting situation. The Cubs actually signed Tucker Barnhart to a two year contract at the beginning of last year, and uh, they wound up letting him go before the end of the first year of that deal. So the Cubs are actually still on the hook to pay Tucker Barnhart, I think, around three million dollars mm -hmm. for the 2024 season. The Diamondbacks, if he does make the major league roster, would just be on the hook for the league minimum. So something like, you know, 750 grand around uh, something around there. So, yeah, not a not a high dollar acquisition by any means. And as you said, not necessarily a high impact move either. But another guy that the Diamondbacks can add to that mix behind the plate, Jose Herrera and Tucker Barnhart are uh, probably the you know the two guys that that backup role would come down to for right now. We did talk about Adrian Del Castillo, uh, who is in the minor league system, reached AAA this past season. I think he maybe has an outside chance, you know, will at least be given a shot in spring training to, to show what he can do. Yep. Um, and Mike Hazen, in a, a in a story over at the Arizona Republic that just came out, uh, told Nick Picoro that the Diamondbacks are are maybe still looking to add in this area as well. So uh, we could still see another addition on the catching front between now and opening day. That's the part that makes it truly feel like everybody does kind of have a chance. Like none of these guys really pace each other in a way where you feel like, one, you know, that that Tucker Barnhart is going to, for instance, have a better chance than uh, any, any of the other candidates right now that the Diamondbacks do have. Jose Herrera obviously has the fact that he, uh, knows this team. He was a part of it last year, right. so he has an advantage. Tucker Barnhart does have a bit of an advantage. Like I said earlier, uh, he did catch 14 games of Eduardo Rodriguez last year, and that is some. There is something to be. I said. I guess we have to say two years ago now. Two right? years ago, yeah, two years now, ago. Sorry, now yeah, it's 2024. That's right. That's right. I forgot. <laughs> uh, but you know, of course, there's something to be said about the fact that uh, he caught 14 starts for Erod in 2022, um, and he had, Erod had a 3.65 ERA in those games. So I mean. That there there is a slight advantage, not a, not a huge advantage. It's not like it's something that's really going to give him a leg up on the competition. But I mean, I'm sure his familiarity with Rodriguez is a big reason why the Diamondbacks probably are giving him this opportunity. And and and, and he is a veteran. Uh, by comparison to Gabby Moreno, it is kind of the the yin and yang that you would want. You know, sure. somebody who can bring in that experience and that knowledge, share it with Gabby, and also give him you know some time off. However. I don't think that they're going to want Gabby if Tucker Barnhart was the backup playing as much as he would with with Tucker behind him. I, I don't feel like that's going to be like a split time kind of situation. It's going to see Gabby no. getting as much as many catches as he got last year. Yeah, Gabby is going to be the D-backs primary catcher. There's no it's not like the beginning of last season. We were talking about Carson Kelly and Gabby Moreno and. Right. The, the narrative was that Carson Kelly was going to start out as the Diamondbacks primary catcher and then, you know, kind of see where things went from there. Uh, obviously, Gabby Moreno cemented himself as the Diamondbacks everyday catcher uh, by the end of the season. But we all know the catching position is brutal physically. It's not something that you can ask someone to do 150 times per season. That's not realistic. And so, yeah, you know, whether you like it or not, you're going to need someone to help fill some of those games. Tucker Barnhart, certainly in that mix. The thing that really stands out to me about Tucker Barnhart is just his his commitment to developing relationships with pitchers and just getting to know their arsenals and getting to know what makes them tick. Yeah. That was a big narrative out of Chicago last year after he signed with the Cubs. There were several stories uh, written about Tucker Barnhart and the investment that he had put into trying to get to know some of his Cubs starting pitchers and uh, you know, diving deep into scouting reports before he even showed up at spring training. Uh, all signs are that this is a veteran catcher who's really invested in his pitchers and really willing to do whatever it takes on his end to try to get them to succeed. Uh, that's kind of the selling point for Tucker Barnhart. If you look at the hitting stats, there was a time when Tucker Barnhart was a pretty decent hitter. You go back to some of his days with the Cincinnati Reds. He was right around league average. Um, he's won a couple gold glove awards in the past. I don't think he's quite that guy behind the plate anymore. If you look at some of the defensive metrics for him, Not very uh, he was slightly below average in terms of blocking, according to StatCast, slightly below average in terms of throwing behind the plate. Uh, he still did grade out as an above average framer uh, just slightly in 2023. So I guess that's his biggest yeah. asset. 
defensively. But yeah, for Tucker Barnhart, for the Diamondbacks, I imagine a lot of this came down to what can Tucker Barnhart do for our pitchers? What can he unlock, you know, that maybe some of our other catchers uh, have not been equipped to do? Well, and I mean, again, there's there there is something to be said about somebody who approaches catching behind the plate differently like that like you said developing that relationship with pitchers and and yeah in some cases uh that might be completely a, a completely different skill set than what their catchers what gabby might have right now i know that you know framing of course is one thing that he does have over jose herrera that struggled with that last year um but jose herrera did have the better arm i just i don't i don't really know i i think that at the end of the day competition is good it's going to get the best out of these guys because if they have an opportunity to right. be on this team, you're hopefully going to see the best. Uh, and I think it gives an opportunity for someone even like Adrian Del Castillo to have an opportunity here to win this job. I, I don't think the Diamondbacks are really committed to any of these guys. And I think this is another Mike Hazen like sifting through, you know, some potential candidates and trying to find the one that, that stands out a bit. He's very yeah. good at that. And it, doesn't feel like every single transaction he makes works, but especially when it comes to finding either vets that can contribute to the team or guys that other teams have kind of given up on that, you know, like like uh, Adrian Del Castillo a little bit, like the other guy they signed, left-handed pitcher uh, Logan Allen uh, on a minor league deal. Like these are guys that at one time were valued very highly in their career. There was a lot of potential there. And with time, they didn't really perform to that level. It's a low-risk uh, as far as signing them to a minor league deal and bringing them in as non-roster invitees. But yeah. it could potentially have have a pretty high reward for a team that's trying to still keep their budget low while filling some of these other roles, right? I mean, I would happily sacrifice the backup catcher role to being someone like Tucker Barnhart that has those numbers that we saw rather than them trying to spend a lot of money on somebody that isn't yeah, I mean, Gabby's our guy. Like, I don't want him to spend yeah, money on yeah. a backup catcher, you know? Like, this right. is the kind of situation that I want for a backup catcher. Yeah, I I, I agree. If, if you're the Diamondbacks and, you know, we don't know exactly what they have to spend for the remainder of the offseason, but we suspect that whatever resources they have remaining, a lot of that is going to go toward this, this bat that they want to add. Uh, Mike Hazen in that uh, Arizona Republic story that I referenced uh, did talk about how the D-backs have uh, in particular, engaged with left-handed uh, targets on that front. Um, it sounds like maybe things are trending in the direction of the Diamondbacks getting a lefty uh, as that bat instead of a righty, which I know would rule out a lot of the guys that are kind of at the top of the list for D-backs fans, J.D. Martinez, Jorge Soler, Reese Hoskins. Of course, all those guys, Justin Turner, all those guys are right-handed. The pool of lefties that are out there, we've touched on them. There's not quite as many of those guys out there, but... Yeah, all that to say, uh, you know, if you've got ten million dollars or whatever to spend, you probably want to probably want to put that toward the bat, and then uh, better backup, put it towards the bat. <laughs> yeah, your backup catcher role is is really, you know, I, I don't want to say it's not important at all because these are still, you know, 40, 40 games, something like that that you're probably giving to this backup catcher. But at the end of the day, Gabby Moreno is going to provide you expect a lot of value behind the plate. You want to see if you can add value elsewhere. It's time to stop thinking of him as like not our guy, like not our starting, catch, you know, like that is our starting. Catcher. Yeah. And, and he's one of probably going to be one of the best. It's yeah. incredible. It's incredible. But again, yeah. uh, the Diamondbacks do continue to try uh, to improve this team. And they did sign another uh, player to a minor league deal with a spring training invite uh, per John Heyman. Uh, shortstop Kevin Newman has agreed to a deal with the D-backs. Uh, per Steve Gilbert, that is, a again, a minor league deal with a spring training uh, invite. But, again, Kevin Newman, another guy where you're going to look at his stats here that we have. They're not going to really jump off the page uh, from his 2023 season. But you never know, right? You never know. <laughs> In my case, and we trust because, again, some of these guys uh, just aren't – like Newman wasn't really receiving that – much of an opportunity over there, you know? So, I mean, again, this might just be uh, a fresh start. It also might be an opportunity just to find a, a backup shortstop, which they really don't have right now. Like not a clear one, right? Yeah, that's, I think that's what this comes down to. The Diamondbacks right now at shortstop, they have Blaze Alexander, who has yet to play in the majors, and Jordan Lawler, uh, who the team certainly believes in in the long term, but isn't necessarily expecting a ton from Immediately. Yeah. Um, not not to say that, you know, Jordan Lawler couldn't come out and have a great spring and 
you know, maybe open open the season as the Diamondbacks everyday shortstop. I, I don't want to say that's impossible, but there's there's a clear need for depth uh, just to kind of shore up that position and make sure that you weren't backed into a corner of having to give a bigger role to a Blaze Alexander or a Jordan Lawler before they were really ready for it.